Welcome to Fight News Now Extra. It's John Pollock. We have a packed edition of the show today with lots of news. John Ramdean and Robin Black will be by to break all of it down with me as we chat about Shogun discussing future fights, Hendo cutting back to 185, Ray Cepho comments on Steve Carl, and more shots fired at Vitor Belfort. Michael Bisping and Luke Rockhold are in Sydney for this Friday's Fight Night card and took part in a press conference with attention quickly turning to number one contender Vitor Belfort and their thoughts on Belfort receiving a title fight next February. Vitor was juiced to the gills for many years and, and now he's not. Now, Chris is going to win that fight, thanks, first thanks. and foremost, that's what I think. And of course he's at an advantage of what I were because he's no longer juiced to the gills, I'm gonna say that. But he's gonna have better cardio. And yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, no, exactly, so, um, <laughs> and he can you, still know, be juiced you know, do really I wanna fight Chris? Like of course that. I do. I think every middleweight on the planet, as a fighter, that's what we wanna do. Vitor, I think his uh, physical appearance is altered, it's quite visible. Is he gonna be the same person? That's the question that everybody's asking, and only he knows. We shall see. Vitor is uh, a joke to me. Uh, We'll see what the what comes out. You know, I'm very interested to see what he turns up. I'm interested to see what happens. His uh, drug test he just took the other day. The World Series of Fighting has released welterweight Steve Carl after Carl had been vocal about not receiving more fights from the promotion. Moments before the release, I had spoken to President Ray Cepho, who outlined the problems with Carl and why he had not received a fight recently. Steve got offered a fight. He said he was injured. His uh, contract was extended. We waited for medical uh, favors to come from him. Nothing. So the only thing I knew from Ali was that he got offered a fight. He turned it down because he was injured. I see Steve Carl in Canada, but he's like, well, you know, I mean, asking you to fight, this and this and that. I'm like, well, Steve, the only thing that I know about you fighting is that you were offered a fight and you turned it down because you were injured. Now, at this point, that's all I know. Unless you call me and tell me... Otherwise, I don't know anything else. He told me he's injured, but he can fight with an injured shoulder. That's a liability, especially for us. He's telling me that he's injured, but he's willing to fight. Well, I'm not going to allow for him to fight if he's injured. He just told me he's injured. The Camorra website out of Sweden reports that a welterweight fight between Tarek Safadine and Matt Brown is in the works for a tentative card in Sweden on January the 24th of next year, with Brown and Safadine both coming off of losses in the weight division. Ariel Hawani reported on UFC Tonight that Dan Henderson is leaning towards a move back to the middleweight division following a loss to Daniel Cormier this past May. Henderson also tells Hawani that he wants to fight in January on any of the cards scheduled for that month. And finally, Mauricio Shogun Hua will meet Ovin St. Preux this Saturday in Brazil and later in 2015 will coach Season 4 of Tough Brazil alongside Anderson Silva. The two coaches are not scheduled to fight at the end of the season, but Shogun tells Combat in Brazil that he doesn't want to fight Silva, but would do so if the UFC asked. And I'm here with John Ramdean and the returning Robin Black. Lots of stuff to get into. Uh, let's start off with World Series of Fighting. I literally interviewed Ray Cepho and discussed all the problems with Steve Carl, but hey, they were going to work through them, and 20 minutes later, they're not going to work through them. They released Steve Carl, who's gone. And there have been a number of fighters. Carl, uh, we also have uh, Dave Huckaba, Cody Bollinger. They have gone online on Twitter and are just complaining about not getting enough fights. And you can hear my whole interview on the MMA report to get Ray Cepho's side of the story. But Steve Carl's gone right now. I would think right now for a fighter, November 15th, a per perfect example. Three promotions running in prime time at the same time. You would think a fighter of Steve Carl's stature at this point will land somewhere. Yes, definitely. Steve Carl, a very talented individual. And I think it's a strange move from the World Series of Fighting organization because you're trying to build your own talent because you look at some of the big names that they've had on the show, whether it be Tyrone Spong or Anthony Johnson or Andre Arlovsky, those fighters cost a lot of money. And a guy like Steve Carl, where people don't know his name, but you know how talented he is. You know, this guy defeated uh, John Fitch, so clearly he's got skills at 170 pounds. You want to keep those guys because you're not paying them ridiculous amounts of money. So when people tune in to see whatever, whoever it be, Andre Orlovsky, whatever big, I know Andre Orlovsky doesn't fight there, but whatever big fight they have, Jake Shields or Ryan Ford, and you have Steve Carl on the uh, undercard, and they say, wow, this guy's super talented. I'll tune in next time to see him. Is it, isn't it's this a, a message, move. though, to your fighters? that if you're going to go on Twitter and try to publicly embarrass us, we're not going to create yeah. this slippery slope and allow fighters to just go, you're not happy here? Cool. Yeah, Bye. well then, yeah, I was just going to say, if you don't like it, then then you know how to get out of it. Hey, I, I got to get out of my contract. World Series of Fighting sucks. Send. 
you know, that's how you get out of your contract now, I guess. But this is a weird one because Bellator and the UFC will both want him. Yeah. I mean, he's a great fighter. It's fun to watch. They'll both want him. So you're, you're giving away a guy that's presumably, like you said, lower cost, letting him go to your competitor. And he's a good fighter. Yeah. So that's a bit weird. But what are you going to do? This is all a sign of one of the most common things you see with a new organization, whether is they say, oh, we're going to be huge. We're going to do like 50 shows a year. We're going to sign everybody. And they sign all these guys. They don't do that many They're shows. They're planning 16 yeah. shows in 2015. But hey, this month marks two years since their yeah, first show. And I think we all were yeah. having the same discussion back in November 2012. Will they see year two? They, partly, they are. Partly we were having that discussion because we're like, nobody wants to lose like 30, 40 million dollars. But apparently these guys don't mind losing 30 or 40 million. They've lost a lot of money. And they call it investing. You go, well, we're reinvesting. That's cool. That's cool. We loved seeing it happen, but reinvesting for when? Like, when is this going to turn a profit? You and know? also, it's also the fighter's responsibility. And I know it, it comes down to their contract, but you know, you have to know when you're signing with an organization that, like, this isn't new. You go back and look at the short history of mixed martial arts. Organizations have popped up. They've been able to have shows for one year, two years. Some have had shows for three years. But eventually, unless you're the UFC, unless you're the big dog, like, look at Strike Force is gone. The WEC is gone. Pride is gone. So a lot of these, you can understand from a fighter's perspective how some of these organizations be fly by night. And I understand you want to line your pockets. That yeah. means you have to, in your contract, you should be able to go like Alexander Shlomenko, for example. He's also fighting in Russia coming up. Yeah. So he has his contract with Bellator and he's able to fight overseas to supplement yeah. his income. They, I, I love World Series of Fighting. We're not knocking. I'm just saying if you went on fight, uh, on uh, Drag, uh, Dragon Slayer or Shark Tank. Drag, you go on yeah, the, the yeah. show Shark Tank and you stand up there and you pitch this thing. Well, we got a TV thing. We got this, this. Can I see your numbers? Here's our numbers. They'd be like, I'm not investing in that. That's I am not doing that. Does that affect the fighters, the viewers, whatever? No, we love it. It's great. Fighters get to fight. We get to watch it. But for the whoever's losing this money, it's, it's a tough go. Quickly, Dan Henderson going into the Shark Tank that is the UFC middleweight division. Yay or nay? As long as they're big fights, as long as they're competitive fights against guys that he can be, you know, he can win and he can lose but not get embarrassed, I think it makes sense. He's a legend. He should be able to do whatever he wants. Yeah, I, he's better. You're going to be better at 185. You're not fighting monsters. You saw what Daniel Cormier could do yeah. to him. I mean, you have smaller guys, that's a better move for him. And coming in way under 205 pounds. But he for says that it's also a difficult Cormier. cut for him. He says he's no spring chicken, so to get down to 185 pounds. Isn't easy. It's hard work. It sucks. But yeah. you're in your 40s, you got to cut weight. It sucks. All right, that wraps it up for us. Stick around, though. We have more Fight News Now Extra coming your way.